Hello and welcome to Miami in the background. And welcome to Kennedy Saves the World. I don't know why we're going to have this conversation. I, I think that everyone in this country is a masochist. And all the the crazy, infirmed, feeble people who are in power in Washington, they are the sadists. And it is an odd game that's very kinky that I didn't think that I would see play out so protractedly in my lifetime. And we all saw Mitch McConnell freeze up for a second time. Obviously, something is wrong. And I don't appreciate it. I, I think that Corrine Jean-Pierre, who obviously is the White House communications press secretary, blah, blah, blah. She's a propagandist. That is her job. She is told what to say and she says it. She doesn't do it well. She has to look inside a notebook. Uh, she can't answer a pointed question. She has this fake frustration and she just repeats the same canned lines over and over again, uh, like about the president. And when you have reporters and anchors like Jake Tapper who press her and say, you know, the president uh, doesn't look so great. 73% of people in this country think that he's too old to be reelected. And she goes, just watch him. Just watch him. Because that's what she's told to say. Because that's what the president said it at some point. And we're all sitting around going, we are watching him. We're watching him fall up the stairs of Air Force One. We're watching him lie about his family and his connections and what he didn't didn't know about his son's business deals. We watch him say things like, God save the queen, man. And none of it makes sense. It's not aging well. And so last week there was a poll that 70 percent of Americans don't want the president to run for reelection. They feel that he's too old for the job. This week it's 73 percent. It's a Wall Street Journal poll. And it's only going to go up as the president is taxed by a, a very exhausting election cycle, which he should be, in which every person who seeks the presidency, they should be exhausted by the process. Uh, they should be taking incoming questions and queries from voters and journalists alike and also foes who are also running for office who are trying to challenge them from another part of the political spectrum. It should be exhausting. But the problem is if you've had a grandparent who's gotten old um, and you see that year to year, the decline gets steeper and steeper as the years pass. So in a year from now, when it's late summer of 2024 and we're in the home stretch, how do you think Joe Biden is going to be performing? What kind of gaffes is he going to make? When is he going to fall asleep when he's sitting next to a world leader? Uh, what sentence is he going to mumble that is going to create an international incident that gets us into a full scale war? Because those things are very possible. Uh, we have flirted with them, sometimes aggressively flirted with them and sometimes, you know, sniffed its hair as the president is wont to do. So voters see this, but the politicians don't see it. And enough voters, they, they have not clumped together to create a coalition of people who have had enough of feeble, incompetent, weak leaders who are no longer capable of running the country. Don't go anywhere. More Kennedy saves the world right after this. And I put Mitch McConnell in that basket as well. He had a fall in March. He had his little freeze up last week. It's hard to watch. It makes you incredibly uncomfortable, regardless of where you are politically, because Again, we see our family up there. We see a loved one. We see our grandparents. And you never want someone to be in that position where they are in pain or they are scared or they are incapable. But that's where we're at. You've got Diane Feinstein. God only knows what kind of shape she's in with Mitch McConnell. You know, he had an MRI. He had an EEG. I think there are probably other diagnostics that they could run on him and subject him to that might give us a little bit more information than, well, it wasn't a seizure, a seizure or a stroke. It's like, well, maybe there are 1,500 other things that it could be, and maybe he's suffering from one of those, and maybe he shouldn't be the Senate minority leader any longer. And I know it's just this blue versus red constant, well, who's barely in control of the Senate now? Maybe we have to look beyond that, and maybe we have to shake the political tree and expect some some less ripe apples to fall at our feet because uh, these sick apples, they they are rotten and it's not good. And I'll tell you what, you, you can make applesauce with it. It's going to taste like garbage, but you cannot make a fresh piping hot apple pie, which is American. And that's what we deserve. We deserve more from our leaders. We certainly deserve more from the president. 
hell, I don't think he should finish out this term, let alone seek another one. I do think at some point, and I know many others have raised this point, but at some point it's elder abuse. It's mean to do to someone, to put them in a position where they think they're doing a great job. It's not a great job. It's a bad job. And he doesn't have the energy. He doesn't have the wherewithal. He doesn't have the capacities. Neither does Mitch McConnell. Neither does Dianne Feinstein. Neither does John Fetterman. And guess what? Some of it has to do with age, but certainly not all of it. I think when your infirmities eclipse your capabilities, that's when it's time to call it a day. But for some reason, we have this mandate in politics that you are just going to keep pushing and grinding, I don't know, until you're dead? But I think as voters, we deserve more than people who are almost corpses. We certainly do. And we have to start voting like it. We have to start talking like it. And I know I've said this a million times. Maybe we have to break this two-party stranglehold because when you're in this trench warfare, this constant trench warfare, and you're just making these incremental advances, then good enough is good enough, and it's not. We deserve greatness. We deserve better. We deserve ripeness. We deserve capacity. Uh, But right now what we're getting is just constantly let down again by generals in the army of aged zombies who, frankly, they don't wish us well. Because if they did, if they loved the country and they loved the places that they serve and, and the people who live in those places who call themselves their constituents, if they really, really loved us, then they would step aside for the greater good. Because the greatest thing to them is staying in power no matter if they can't enjoy it any longer because all of their brain cells are shot. Uh, It sucks. It's unacceptable. And unfortunately, it falls upon me to save the world. So I'm going to have to become the empress of humanity and, you know, pound out a few dictates in order to make things finally better and more rational. Uh, I love you madly. And you know that you don't deserve me, but I'm still here. This has been Kennedy Saves the World. I'm Kennedy. Listen ad-free with a Fox News Podcast Plus subscription on Apple Podcasts and Amazon Prime members can listen to this show ad-free on the Amazon Music app. Oh, go ahead and leave me a review while you're there. I'd love to hear what you have to say. You've been listening to Kennedy Saves the World on the Fox News Podcast Network.